Amen. How y'all doing? Wow, wow. I tell you, this is uh, it's exciting to be here with and amongst bona fide believers who believe God. I mean, that, and that's not a light thing. When we believe him and we trust him as though we speak and we think in him, we live, we move, we have our being. And as we believe him and trust him and trust his word and the assignments that we have as born again believers, believers who are members of the body of Christ and members in particular with a specific assignment. Hear me now. A specific assignment that nobody, Sister Nell, can do like you. Well, he's called you for specific, for a specific purpose as well as all of us, and we collectively come together to do his bidding. And this time, in this hour, in this midst, he's using this man of God. <laughs> uh, there, 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 there's, uh, you know, there ain't no such thing as a two-headed, you know, something. This is, I honor this man. He's a friend. Uh, and a great brother, great teacher, great servant of God who hears his voice and is obedient. My goodness, that's good stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's real good stuff to be able to do that. And um, I tell you, I mean, it's, it's, we, we clicking on a lot of things, a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so far out there right now is my, my body's here. <laughs> Just the things that the Lord is downloading in my spirit about what needs to be done because he's got some folk here that are hungry. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You're hungry, but your spirit's right. Now, you can be hungry and, you, you know, it's, oh, man, you know, oh, yeah, I don't have to say anything because y'all spirit's right. And we've just come off of... Um, you know, our economic power meant empowerment summit. We had all the folks back there doing their stuff. That was good to see and uh, to be able to fellowship with uh, such men of God as my friend, Dr. Harvey, and my friend, uh, Dr. Daryl uh, Jones, Jer Jordan uh, Jones, my goodness. Uh, tr just, just tremendous. And I, 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 I wanted to be here Sunday, you know, um, I'm not going to talk about any physical ailments because it, it can't slow me down. I just have to temper it and do things right, as the Lord would say. Um, but man, I got, I got, it's so, so, so much stuff in me that I have to share. I have to teach. And the hungrier we all are the way this thing is, uh, is, is coming out. And it's, it's, it's really, really, really coming together. So um, continue to pull and draw on the anointing that God has placed on these vessels. And that's each one of us have to be able to do that. And this, uh, this, was, this was off the cuff, the introduction. And now uh, Dr. Harvey's going to come up and do something. <laughs> I have a little something, something that I, 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 I want to be able to hook up and show a couple of things on. Just, just, just stuff that's going to benefit you to grow in the knowledge of the economy and understanding financial strategies and stuff, right? So we're going to have some tools a little, little session, maybe five minutes or something, that we'll be able to do that. I'll, I'll get hooked up. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'll do that. All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Good day, good day. Today is a good day. And um, I'm pretty sure that everybody experienced a storm last night. That was exciting. And, um, and something amazing about that storm, you know, normally I would um, contend against a storm. I will command it to see, so I'll speak to it. But this one, I just felt like, don't you say nothing to this. And I'm pretty sure this was had some, I know God was doing something. And um, the other day, he just told me um, that morning, he said, read the book of Revelations. 
And so I read half of the book. Then the next day I read the other half of the book. And when he told me something to pinpoint and thought, when I came back, boom, that was the first thing was in the next chapter right there. So I know he's speaking. And everything is changing. You know, church is not the way it used to be in the eyes of the kingdom and what's going on, on in this planet. And we have to make sure that we are not just the, um, the common folks, just the regular people who go to church and, you know, hey, that was just a wonderful time we had in the Lord. You know, God going to do his thing whether we paying attention to it or not. You know, he's going to do that. And so we want to make sure that we, we don't get so caught up in life, you know, working, cooking, you know, cleaning the house, and we're not paying attention. He said he didn't have the ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And we have to make sure that we're hearing, that we're giving ear, we're giving attention to him for what he wants done. Because some things that people are doing, you no, know, they'll be they they can do it for a little while, but it's not going to always, it's not going to fit in the um, in the system. And uh, I just want to share with you um, briefly. And I thought Reverend Partridge was going to do a little bit more than that, <laughs> but he's going to do a little bit more later. That's all fine. We we know how to flow. We just get we just try to stay ready. And so um, I always try to you know give more opportunity to persons that we're laboring with. And we want to thank him for being here on Saturday. Saturday was a very long day and a um, very productive day. And if he was here Saturday, he should be here today as well um, because it's not something that, okay, you do it, then, okay, let me chill out, and then, okay. See, that's, we, we missed the momentum, and the momentum will always cause a person, you have to pick up where you left off and it get kind of like, you know, you get sloppy in the endeavor. You know, you become spiritually sluggish. And, um, and Pastor Daryl Jordan, you know, he'd been emailing how he had a blast. I love to see it on a man of God's face that had a good time preaching and was welcome and was on. That means a lot. That feels good. Cause I've been places, they, you know, they're like, you know, all right, whatever, you know. <laughs> but when you feel welcome and you feel love, I mean, he came in here jumping and hopping and just bust right up into my office. I'm like, man, what are you doing? <laughs> you were just happy, you know. And so I, it's, it's, it's a blessing. When pastors can be happy because of the burden, the, the concerns, and the cares that we carry. But I want to share just a little bit with you today um, because um, I, I started a new business today, another one. I need to write them down so I don't forget how many we have. And um, <laughs> okay, I can't tell you, I need to write them down. And I um, came in partnership with some other people who are already in the business and deep levels and um, know a lot more than what I know in that area as far as you know, platforms and um and I know you're probably a little bit familiar with some of the stuff that I, I may talk to you about or share with you just to say. But um, then the, it started to congeal from there. Things begin to build um, what they're doing on our side, what we're doing on our side, and things like that. We kind of like want to come together and see if, what things are possible. And I like business like that. I like that, you know, I'm not just want you to come to do what I'm doing, but hey, how can we bring, how can we put both of these sites of the bread together and see what type of sandwich we're going to get out of this? And so I, that's what I love about business and um, doing God's business because every joint supplies part. Now, I'm just doing my thing. I'm going to go my way. That's why people fail. And that's why they don't succeed. That's why they only have us so much in their lives. And so we want to go to the next level of that. So what I want to talk to um, <laughs> defeating selfishness to succeed. And, and it's important, defeating selfishness. Defeating selfishness to succeed. And um, I, I come on the biblical aspect part is because, you know, Business is more than, you know, profit and loss, spreadsheets and, you know, referral links and, you know, inventory and things to that degree. It's character and where you are. You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Mm -hmm. Then also he said the, the wealth of the wicked will eventually find its ways into the hands of the righteous. That doesn't mean that, you know, that their whole bank deposit is going to, you know, going to show up into your mailbox. It means that what they have formed with their hands, they'll do it to the point that it's easy for you to work it with your own hands. And so we have to look at character when we're in this. And where I have a great opportunity to develop a strong business, including people with diverse businesses, but they have to be qualified to be able to participate in this kingdom um, assignment, and you don't want to be the type of person that, you know, I just want my business to, to um, succeed. That's why when we had the, the entrepreneur thing going on, what we did is I said, make sure you go, you patronize other people's tables. Because what we're doing, we, we're learning how to move money in the right direction. We learn how to encourage one another. And we learn how to work together so we can break selfishness, okay? Because it's more than the profit. It's more than sales. 
It's more than accumulation. It's about understanding, uh, not being selfish, understanding the full agenda. And when you understand the full agenda, what will actually happen, greater doors will open up for you. What I did Saturday, I went to everybody's table and I purchased something. And um, some people stuff their prices was different. I just went ahead and purchased. You know, I had, I had it in my pocket. I just went ahead and did it. Kind of left the money in the pockets just to do that. And some things I didn't need and some things I didn't desire, but I just did it anyhow. For the sake of unity and moving money in a, in a certain direction and to be an example of that. And some tables I went to more than once and then trying to promote other people's businesses and things to that degree. But the key thing is this. Once you bring increase in your life, what type of business you may have or property you may have, you have to understand the ecosystem. Somebody said ecosystem. The ecosystem is that you first you tied off of it. Okay, that tenth comes back into your local church. Then you pay yourself, then you go and you begin to take care of your financial responsibilities. And now that's vital because that's God's system. God's system is to first honor him with the tenth, and then you pay yourself. And the reason why you do that because you program yourself that money comes to you. It's not all going out in bills and in struggling mode, okay? It doesn't go that way. So it puts a groove in your mind that you understand that money can come to you, all right, can come to you. So that's important. And so it, it in your case, well, we made profit, we did this, okay, but did we participate in the ecosystem? Did we participate and did, did I'm taking a portion of that and honoring God with that 10% of the church that I belong in, and I'm taking the other portion and giving myself something, even though it, on paper it doesn't look like it's going to still meet, you know, the responsibility. Don't worry about that because our brains can't figure that out, right? We couldn't figure out how the storm was going on last night. But it's still storm. So that means it doesn't need your understanding in order for it to work. Correct? Come on, talk to me now. And so likewise, the same way. Even though you can't see whether you're going to have enough for this, you just go ahead and practice that same system. You practice that same system. That same system will bring you into a new culture where all things are possible, where God can participate. And so every time you make profit, 10% always, whatever comes in your hand, now that's already earmarked. Like I said, if I gave you um, $500 for your car, no, boom. If God tell you something different, then that's what you do with it. But other than that, you pay your car no with it. When somebody, I, I, I tied off birthday money. When I get, if I get birthday money, I tie it off because it's not earmarked. It's not earmarked. And so when somebody get me five or six or dollars, whatever, I tie it off. Everything that comes to my hands, I tie it off. It, and I, I put something for myself and I go and pay bills. And God, I don't have to understand it, but that's how he works here. I don't have to understand it in order for it to work. I just need to understand that it will work. That's all I need to do. So I don't become selfish, and selfish is going to rob people of their success in life. And right now, God is putting golden people in our midst. When I say golden, I pe people who've been tried and been through the fire, and they have a value of worth on their life, and they carry the anointing that can help change a person's financial situation or their business in the blink of an eye. So you cannot love yourself until you love others. You cannot love yourself until you love others. You have to get free from selfishness. If you don't, you're going to judge other people. Okay? We have to get free from selfishness. If we don't, we will judge other people. Because selfishness will always judge others. You always judge others. You know, there have been times before in my immature days, you know, when I was into, you know, a type of business or a financial endeavor, I thought, you know, what I had, Everybody, you don't need what you have. <laughs> you know, come and do what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm looking at, well, there's not going to work. This is not going to what I got. And that was because I was selfish. And selfishness breathes out of fear because you, 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 you feel as though, you know, if I don't get you come over here, I'm not going to, I fear not to have. You can't really detect it, but it, is, it breathes out of fear. And so it's vital. Somebody say it's vital. It's vital that you, you show love and benefit into other people's projects and things they're doing. It's, it's vital to do that to protect yourself so you be qualified for the true wealth. Somebody say true wealth. True wealth. Because greater wealth is coming. I'm, my mind is like, I said, how are all these other things is happening? That was just one thing that happened today. I ain't talking about the other the thing that happened the other two days ago. I, 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 we're working on administration for that right now, the team for that before I, you know, I even released that publicly. But that, that is humongous. I ain't never been in that, that business arena before. And we are walking, we, we, we are heading in the Abrahamic blessing. 
I'm gonna tell you, we, I'm gonna tell you that listen to we head in that way. And so I don't care if you had to come up here on a popsicle stick, you need to do that because you don't want to miss this because it's not gonna wait for you. It's so valuable to the point you have to be it had to be sacrificially um how can I say met. You got to go through some things. Abraham had to um, make a sacrifice, right? And to make a sacrifice. And so it's not gonna come well by being casual or you know, uh how can I say um uh, have a you know, casual approach to it, not, 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 not put enough worth and honor on it. Now, last night I was tired. I didn't get a lot of rest. You know, I had to travel out of town and come back, and then the storm was going like whatever. Everybody scattered through the house. And I got up this morning, but I know I needed to pray because I know I need to hear from God. I know I need to hear from him. Yeah. I had to connect my spirit with God's spirit in prayer and rub minds with God so I can hear what he has to say to me and empower me for the work that needs to be done. And he never fails on assignments that need to be completed for that day or bringing me to a, a greater level of biblical understanding and education. And that's so important. You can't be lazy at this time because selfishness is also lazy. You, it, you got to change your routine. Now you, we can respect God and things to that degree, but can he use us? Can he count on us? Can it depend on us? That's important. Now, so um, Genesis 3 and chapter 3 and verse 2 and the 6, I'm just going to elaborate what's in there. And other things that, that's in there is um, that's basically dealing with, um, uh, who is that? That's Abraham. That is Abraham. That's, that's the, uh, the sons in there. Self, talk about self, it is, it is contagious. And when you get your mind off of what God said, and what you think that is selfishness. Now, let's look at this. The woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the what? God, right? Look at the next verse. He said, but the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you should not eat there, neither, neither shall you touch it, lest you're going to die. Look at the next verse. He said, and the serpent said to him, woman, you should not surely die. No, he was, doing, he was getting her to get her attention on herself, not on what God wanted. You follow me? And so this business, opportunities we have, don't get your business or your finances on yourself, but the way that God wanted. God is a businessman, not just a businessman, but he knows business. And it's an assignment for all prosperity, even to the point when we gave our first offering. God said, I remember the first penny you put in church. He said, I keep record, I keep memory of that. He said, I'm going to bless you according to that if you get into my system for that. And that's amazing. I don't mind him um, you know, ordering, going all the way back to my first penny in, in Sunday school and reward me all the way up until this day. Because he keeps record and he knows how to do business. He's faithful to his word where money is concerned. Amen. So now Satan, used this, he'll use this same thing that cause men to fail. He used the same thing to cause men to fail to get them to think about themselves. There's many times I want to give up in ministry and God said, but it ain't about you. He says it's about them. It's about the people. That's why when we minister the word of God out of this church, it comes out for love for the people, not to show how bright or brilliant or, you know, without the knowing you ain't none of that. OK, and so it's for the love of the people. When I go to other nations, go to other churches, like God, put your love that you have for them in my heart. Put your love. What you have for them in my hearts. Not so that they can applaud me when I walk on the platform or my pictures all up on posters all around on, on social media, but for the people. Amen. There's a lot of things that I do right now. I don't have to share with people. I don't need people in order to prosper that way, but I share it with people. And that's important. You have to share things with people. You would listen to me. You would not be successful if you're trying to do it within yourself or just for yourself. It's not going to work. You'll get a little bit more than what you have, but you're not going to go no further than that. And that's what we have to realize and understand. How does God want me to prosper? How do you want me to prosper? I don't take a proceeds and profit out of business and, and help other people start their business with it instead of just breaking on home into the bank. Amen. And that's important. And you and God will open more doors for you if you do that. How much time are you going to need, um, Reverend Potters? How much time are you going to need? I will make sure I give you that time. Okay, look, give me give me one more hit. He said, "Come now, God, I will respect you. That the God won't get a rose." Oh, time to close. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we have to get victory over ourselves. We have to get victory over ourselves. And the Bible says this. He said this in the Book of Ephesians. He said, "He that refreshes others, he will soon be refreshed himself." 
Amen. He that refresh others. If you water others, you will be soon be watered. And the Bible says also in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verse eight, he said, whatever you do for others, God will make the same thing happen for you. Amen. Whatever you do for others, God will make the same thing happen for you. But for others, not just yourself, but for others. Amen. For others, but not just yourself, but for others. Now, so insecurity and lack of trust, it is a, it is a poverty mentality because it will bring you to poverty. It will bring you to lack. And so you, you, you must continue to go forward to the next level to help other people. And not just think about what you're doing and spend all the time on what you're doing. But how is this going to benefit someone else I, I will come in contact with? How is it going to benefit them? You know, because just to keep it all to yourself, it's going to, it's going to rot you on the inside. And you won't succeed to the next level of financial prosperity. It just won't happen. Um, and one of the things, you know, and I was talking with Reverend Partridge. I said, listen, I got this, this plan from God, but I, I don't have the right people yet. I just got a few people that can fit in this plan. I don't have all, and I don't want to keep getting people that's in the, that can fit in the plan. They're outside of the house of God because they understand, okay, we got to help people. We got to bring these resources, information, be patient, and help all these people to get to this level. And not just only, watch this, not only introducing um, opportunities and business platforms, but also pastoring them where money is concerned. Because you got to pastor people with money because everybody don't catch on the same way. People learn, but they learn different. Lee, all right? And so it's a pastoring portion to that. When I say we got to pastor people in that, we got to help them. We got to be patient. We got to be kind. And so we bring these people on board who will, how can I say, walk in agreement to listen. I'm going to use a portion of my wealth to do it correctly and to prevent misfortune in the lives of other people. You mean you tell me God ain't going to supersede that prophet? How I know? Because that's what he do for me. Amen. But if you try to say, I want to get the, I want to be out of that. Praise the Lord. Uh, money coming to me. Yeah, it's going to come to you, but how long is it going to stay there? Okay? So we got to go to the next level. Make sure we're not walking in selfishness because it, it is the destroyer to your divine destiny for financial success. Okay? Now I'm going to hit on that some more because I want to see a good, strong team um, come out of this ministry and um, the people that I know with our in reach to be a part of this. And but either way, we still going to do it. All right. But we have to we have to cultivate people and get them ready for that. But make sure in any area where the enemy is trying to make you feel selfish or just you no know, cling to the you no know, hold on to what you have. But this and that you got your five pennies, then you're gone. It, it, it ain't going to work on no five pennies. going to be gone the same way you're gone. OK, so let's do this thing. Let's go to the next level. Let's well, welcome Reverend Partridge up here. So I get into another revelation. All right. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. And that, that, was, that was so key in the uh, message that he just gave because it, it, it boils down to vision with a purpose and with those who have integrity and great character. Because what I have learned is that people can really be talented, have great gifts, great skills, great talents, but those gifts, skills, and talents will take you to a place in life where only your integrity and character can sustain you. I, I tell you, it's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. So uh, um, I want to go into some things that expresses the sincerity of the heart of this leader is to have a team of individuals you have good skill sets and things of that nature, but your character, your integrity, and the ability to mesh together for a united purpose, for a vision that God has called this ministry or this group of individuals to carry out, that's so significant and important. You know, the, 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 the first unity was when God created man and he uh, then pulled out of man, woman, and said, for this cause man shall 
leave his family, his mother and his father, and cleave together to become one flesh. That oneness, that unity is, is kind of emulated in everything that God has. Because even with the body of Christ, it is called the, the bride of Christ himself. So there's that, that marriage component of coming together in unity of people with multiple different skills, gifts, and talents, but we're all looking to him as far as leadership and everything is concerned in the vision. So I just wanted to go through a few things, and as uh, um, uh, my, my assistant over there is looking up Wikipedia, Wik, W-I-K-I-P-E-D-I-A, uh, yes, sir, he's going he's to bring something up so that we can look at it. It's going to be a part of what, what we're talking about tonight. But, um, you know, it, it takes strong people of character. We'll just call us leaders, visionaries, uh, members in particular. And, um, you know, I know I've gone through, we've been through a lot. And I've heard some of Dr. Harvey's uh, uh, testimony. And I just got a few little sayings that, I mean, I, 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 when, I, when I hear the Lord and I'm doing my research, I just write. And I start writing and I got all kinds of documents and books that I've underlined and things of that nature uh, that, that, that's throughout. But um, before, we, before we go to that, thank you for, for bringing it up. That's, that's where we're leading. But... Um, just just a few sayings throughout. You know, a vision is terminated by trials. If it is, it's not likely that it's authentic. When I hear some of Dr. Harvey's testimony, in the last couple of weeks, I remember him sharing with us um, the, the knowledge that he had about a meeting that was in Georgia that may have been like the climate in Florida, but it was cold. But it didn't deter it didn't deter, deter the brother, did it? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm hearing this this he stuck to it. He had a vision. It was authentic. It did not terminate. Not even the wind and the rain was gonna block that brother from getting to his assigned spot. I heard him say he was walking backwards. So that they couldn't feel the wind and the rain in his face and stuff. That's authentic stuff. That vision was not going to be terminated. And he's stronger because of that. And you can see that. That's somebody that you want to follow. It's not about the man. It's about the substance of the man and what God has done to our individual hearts. And when we can collectively do some stuff like that, Wow. That's some tremendous stuff. So um, I'm going to go through a, 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 f a few other things. Uh, just one or two more. A strong vision creates passion, stimulates hope, determination, perseverance, and victory. That's something we can shout on. You can preach on that too, but that's... that's that's what a real good vision is. And you, you, you continue to hear it, and it can be spoken because it just, it just flows. But it's good to write it. Isn't that right? Isn't that what they say over there in Habakkuk? Write the vision. Make it plain so that those we and those others that are coming in to join us can read it and then what? Run with it. That means we're all going in the same direction with the same purpose. It stimulates hope, creates vision, determination, so that we can go on with this thing. But it takes teaching. Each one, reach one, teach one. Embrace one. Carry one. Encourage one. That's what we're doing. And it applies to anything. But this happens to be in an area that we're talking about economic development. Doing some things with finances. This whole world is in topsy-turvy type stuff. 
And when you understand how to capture value first in the people, because God is concerned about, he's always been concerned about the people, in whom he can trust with great value. We're all pearls of great price when we can understand who we are and whose we are and what our individual assignments are. Because like I said, nobody can do it like you. But when we step together and come in unity, remember one sets how many to fly? A thousand. Two. And, and we, 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 we can go on. I'm going to give you all an easy way to remember that. It's in, uh, now this is my math mind, so you all be with me, okay? Everybody know the number 10, Right? So let's say 10 is the base. And if 1 is there, we're saying that that 1 can send 1,000 to flight. So 1,000 is 110 times another 10 times another 10, right? If the base is 10, that's 110, how many... Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to tell you, it's an exponent. It's, it's a little thing that goes up top that represents a thousand. It's like three tens, ti ten times ten times ten is a thousand. Now, if I get somebody else, ten times ten, get with me now, you with me? <laughs> ten times ten times ten is a thousand. Ten times ten is a hundred. Ten times a hundred is a thousand. I, I know it, I sleep it, I can do it backwards and forwards. I'm not going to stick on this thing, but get with this. Because one person has the power of ten three times. Now, another person comes up beside that person. It says, one is it a thousand, two, ten thousand. So, two comes together is not a thousand times a thousand, but it's a thousand times ten, that base ten. Now you could have a base ten and the only thing you're doing up here in the exponent is adding another one because another one person joined. And remember how many tens did we have? We had three and another person that represents ten joined. How many tens do we have? All right, one, 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 one person, the first person, the, is getting deep. And see, numbers are a part of finances. That's why I'm playing with this thing. If you can realize some stuff that you can do exponentially when people come together and agree, and how this thing increases. So, one person represents a base of 10, and that base of 10 as a 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10, which equals a 1,000. Put it in your calculator, it comes out right. But as a base, it's 10 with a 3 up top. Y'all ever seen that written? So if I did 10 with a 4 up top, all that means is it's 10 followed by four zeros. Or if it's 10 with a 5 up top, it's 10 with followed by, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is a million? It's, it's, it's got 1 with 6 zeros, right? So it's 10 to the 6. All right, so we're going to step off that. But, but what it is, and the only reason I went through that is the, to show the power of unity. It's not, not like just two or three of us getting together. It's only going to be two or three of us. It's powerful in an exponential fashion. When we can join in unity with integrity, with purpose, with vision, with authenticity. Oh, man, I'm telling you, y'all get ready for this thing. So what we want to be able to do is uh, get some structures. And I'm... I want to look at some things that what, what we will be building in purpose is a community 
of a body of believers. And I wanted to have this example <clears throat> of a community that I think that we're all familiar with, uh, Jackson Ward. Now, I didn't know, I hadn't studied and didn't know much about Jackson Ward uh, as, as a little guy and didn't know much as uh, a grown person until I moved to this area back in 1997 in Jackson Ward. Uh, it's got some real significant history. Did you know that this place used to be called Black Wall Street, right? I mean, it, it was some serious development. Uh, so back in the day, it was a huge area of major, major, major significance. And it was a community base where black folk had real great economic strength. Not only lived in the community, but worked in the community, sold in the community, had businesses in the community. So within that community, money turned over significant times. Now, if I look today in a community or where I live in a neighborhood, uh, I go around and I'm looking for a business that is, and I, this ain't about black, white, and all that other stuff, but to understand where the dollars come and where the dollars go, it's outside of the community. And there's no return. Now, if I come in here and I had a bunch of folk back there that had all kinds of products that they're selling, and it's an exchange, it's staying within the community, and it turns over. Some nationalities will turn their money over how many times? I mean, umpteen times. I don't know if I'm borrowing from some of the things that Dr. Uh, uh, Jordan had gone over on, on, on Saturday or not, but it's, it, was, it was, he had one chart that rolled up and it showed uh, maybe income or something. And, and, and one was way out here. And that, that was the Jewish community that was way out. But there are other communities. If you go, uh, I used to live in, in uh, California near the Bay Area. And I would go, my wife and I went out, we ate all the time. And we'd go out and we'd see these little communities. Uh, we went to Japan town, China town, uh, Hispanic town. There wasn't no black town. But there were these communities where dollars cycled throughout the communities. Because each one would reach one, teach one, bring one. You see many, many people that come together and help one of the family members, uh, you know, get something started and going. But what I'm saying here at the same time is this was a time when Black folk were really doing some stuff together and had a great community that was really good. But something happened in the general legislature that broke that thing up. And there was a, a need or a desire to do some public improvements. A big freeway came and bifurcated that place. And, and, and it began on a, 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 a tumble. What I'm saying is when you dissect something instead of bringing it together, it's a lot more difficult to make transactions and keep a community together. But that's the base that has to be in place to bring things in, 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 in on board. So what I'm saying and how I'm trying to get that related to what we're doing is building us up so that we are a community of teachers, of believers, of getting things done God's way with his grace. Um, the whole program that's been started, how we're going to capture value and retain value to teach folk about economics, about kingdom economics, not just economics here and of the earth, but we need to be able to do that in that way.
So that, that's, that's why I wanted to bring that up. But it's an interesting thing to be able to read. But there are all kinds of uh, uh, places where community efforts came together. Uh, there was another one over in, in, uh, in Oklahoma, in, in Tulsa, another black Wall Street that went through some stuff. But we are about rebuilding and repurposing and making sure that those that have been taught and structured and got something good that God has given, you got a God idea, a good idea, you got to first, that thing starts with a vision. You write some plans, put some things together to make sure that those who are working with you can read it and run with it. Right? We'll run within it together. But as we're building the structures, building a community of believers that have a vision and a purpose, a product, a business that can be a blessing to the body of Christ. Y'all y'all hear me? That's, that's, that's where we're going with that thing. So, how many of us got a vision about what we're doing. I remember that Dr. Uh, I can't call him Dr. Uh, Pastor Darrell uh, said that one of the, he had like eight takeaways about your turnaround and one of the things he says was over there in Kings he was talking about some things that you have in your house and he challenged us to write down three things that should be stirred up in our spirits. Now, when, when, when we're hearing stuff, we need to take note. As the Lord is speaking, he's drawing and stirring some things up within us. And when it comes, we have to take it seriously. I didn't stop at three. I, I came up with about six. And one of the first ones that came out is this whole thing about a community of university. I was We were talking about university, but... You, you hear about community colleges. It, it has a significance when we talk about a purpose to get value and capture it in a community college of believers, all headed for the same thing and the same purpose. It can be physically, locally, and it can be reaching out into the whole stratosphere. Because we have a framework and a mechanism to reach folk all over the place. We got YouTube, we got internet, we got all kinds of stuff. My excited got excited when that stuff started coming down. And it started with a thought and then an instruction. I know, what, what do you have in your house? What do I have in this house? What is God speaking to you? What is he saying to you? What is it that's so deep within you? Don't think about what you can't do, what you don't have. What is he calling you to do? And, and, and the more way out it is, I said, Lord, this is, this is too, too, too much for me. He said, that's, that's where I want you to be. Because if you think you can do it in and of yourself, out of your flesh, that ain't a God idea. We serve a big God. But he's looking for some folk who are hungry and would dare to believe what he's saying for us to do. So don't take it lightly. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that's why I was trying to get y'all to understand this, this 10 and exponential thing. Because when you get the revelation of that thing, I mean, it's explosive. It's able to take off and excel exponentially. I, I mean, once it gets going, it's like this. You see how this coronavirus thing just keeps. Yeah, and I see y'all get the picture there. <laughs> I didn't have to say, oh, yeah. Because there's nothing. Everybody's on the news. Like, I'm not going to even talk about that thing. But that's what God wants us to be able to do. Can we get excited about that? Man, I'm telling you. So it, 
It, it, but it's going to take. Not, I got the vision. The the, the 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 word was spoken, man. We just we need to start a university then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been in my heart for. I was born to do this thing, and I speak it boldly, because I know I have heard from the Lord. That's in the house. What do you have in your house? What is He daring to call you to do? To step out. And get that thing done. But you can't do it by yourself. Each one, reach one, come together as a community of believers with a purpose. That's assigned by God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Are you ready to take it and run with it? But you got to write it. You got to make it plain. We got to be together and get this thing done. Oh, stay tuned. I'm telling you, this, this is good stuff. So there might be some that's still trying to connect with the Lord and you know, get it clear. Who was that brother that did the fleece thing? What was his name in, Jew, in, in Judges? Gideon, yes, 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 yes. Had to, you know, Lord, I mean, put the fleece out, don't let it be wet or one, one time he wanted to be dry and that type thing. But he had to, he had to prove it and, 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 and make sure that it's right. But this, this is a, a, a step that I say, when you um, write your vision, you got to evaluate it and read it quite frequently. I started writing down a lot of the things that I'm talking about now years ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, that's, that's just me. Man, if I didn't have a word processor, I'd just have stuff written down on, on, on paper. I like to physically see stuff. That, that, that's, that's, that's along with my strength. But you visit it, and you visit it frequently. You speak it, you extract it, draw portions out of it. It, it, it grows as you grow, and you share it with other folk. And other folk can be excited about that as well. Here's, here's another one. We decide our habits. Your habits will control your destiny. So, so what is one of the greatest things that should be a habit? And I heard it was uttered this evening. Uh, Dr. Harvey said that he was out. He had driven all night. And then he got back. And he got up and he felt the need out of a habit to do what? Pray. In all our getting, we get understanding. And in all of our doing, we have to be people of purpose and prayer. Because we set up an atmosphere and an opportunity for God. Not just to be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're just praying and praying, talking, talking. Prayer is communication. It's not one way. <laughs> we got to be still and listen to what he's trying to say to us. You, 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 you typically, we don't hear a lot of that in the church to take the time to spend, to just meditate and be still before God. To listen, he, he he hears us. He knows our heart. But get in this, this place. I, I tell you, the place where I can guarantee you I'm going to get at least a five-minute download. When everything is quiet, I'm usually in the shower or I'm taking me a long Epsom salt-type bath. Just soaking. And then if I'm walking and it's just me, and I'm just walking, and I walk a lot. I walk the staircases, and I, when I'm in when pre-COVID time, whether I was on the 21st, 24th, 25th, 30th, it didn't matter. I walked the stairs, and I'm praying in the Spirit, listening to the Lord, reading, singing, praising. That habit 
It has to be one of your number ones is praying and meditating with God so that we can hear him clearly because he's directing our paths. He's instructing us. He wants to grant and give us things and make it clear for us. Y'all with me? Amen. So this last one is I'm shifting now from um, 20 plus, well, 35 plus years in the private sector. <laughs> from the private sector um, and the public sector in uh, its project, man pro project management, program management, finance management. I mean, there's so much of a skill set that God has given me. So um, this one's specific for me. Employment as a wage earner thwarts my gift. It hasn't been able to explode because it's harnessing my freedom. And you're talking about somebody that's stepping out big time. And it's not what most folk would call retirement. It's repurposing and recalling the time, redeeming the time. So uh, I'm just saying, I'm ready. Y'all ready? Yes. So what do you have in the house? And what are we going to do? But we're going to do it together. Amen. God, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. There's so much other stuff here, but I feel that we are, uh, we're, 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 we're losing time. The last one. The gift is the source of your value. Your value comes from your gift. Your value determines how much you make in life. Your gift you must serve your gift, serve your gift, and then give your gift away in love. Now, a lot of this stuff, I didn't write that one. I don't know where I got it, but it, it reads well, doesn't it? And it's true. I have so many mentors, so many uh, folk that I, I look up to. Some I've never met personally, but I read a tremendous amount. And this sounds like something that... Um, who I've, I've actually met is uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. He had a way with, with words. There are several books that I read of his in, in the beginning of my ministry here in this area was um, all about developing your potential. Man, when, and the way that he broke that thing down was just tremendous. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying get, let's, let's get serious about the gifts that's in the house. Amen. All right. That's that's all I got. Y'all get enough. <laughs> hey. Oh, what what we got? So God never gives you a dream that matches your budget. He's not checking your bank account. He's checking your faith. Now, wow. Yeah. Is it self-explanatory? You think so? And some, some folk may need an extra dose. Are we dreamers? See, I, I know this man, and one of the things that he prophetically states every day is, is sort of like he's got a Joseph anointing to dream and think big. Don't know no small stuff. We serve a big God. And if it's something that you thought up yourself, <laughs> God wants you to be magnified so he can be magnified. Last illustration, and then I'm, I'm really going to sit down. You know, if every, everything that God has created has a purpose, and I really love this one. How many of y'all like flowers? Do, do you, you know there's this little violet-looking flower. It's, it's like 
purple and then on the inside it's white and maybe has pink and it's like on a vine. You, you've seen those things? Do you know what it's called? It's called a morning glory. Have you ever seen those things? They, they go to sleep and they curl up at night. They're, they're cold. But when the sun hits them and the dew is coming, those rascals. Glory to God. Wow. Morning glory. And all they're doing is saying glory to God. Because they know what's in the house. That's what they were designed to do. Just like you and me. What's in the house? And we give him the glory. When we act it out and we do what he's called us to do. Ah, amen. Yeah, he carried a different anointing today. I can feel it. Amen. A lot of stuff came alive on the inside of me on that. You know, we're going to get ready for our offering, but um, yes, praise God. But before that, some of, some of the things came back to my uh, remembrance when he was talking. And I went to see a, a specialist a doctor the other day, and, um, and I was telling him about my other doctor. I had to travel so far and everything. He said, I'm not trying to say anything about your other doctor. He said, no, he told me, he said, but I'm an expert. I said, all right. Now. He, said, he said, I'm an expert. He said, I can do this and I can do this. I can do it like that. And when I was coming back to, uh, I'm going to say to the USA, I'm back to Chester, <laughs> God said, well, he was saying that he had perfected his gift. And, he, and God was telling me, he said, the gift that I've given you, he said, be an expert at it. Spend time with it. Keep, well, I do spend time with it, but he was telling me, be an expert at it. And the price he gave me was an expert price, too. But <laughs> I'll tell you, it was a real expert price. But I said, yeah, that's okay. You just, you're a good expert. All right. But um, it ministered to me. And two things ministered to me yesterday is about being an expert at the gift that was in the house. And also to understand how hunger um, just deteriorates people. Because I was hungry. I was real hungry the other day. I, mean, I was so hungry, I was getting headaches and stuff. I had an attitude of a toddler, you know, which I do have every now and then. Thank you, amen. I don't have to say anything about that. <laughs> but, um, and so my, the, if I perfect my gift and become more of an expert in that area, I can help defeat hunger in the lives of other people. I wasn't starving. I was just hunger. And then how it, it kind of messed with me a little bit yesterday in a, in a un, very unusual way because this assignment that we have is more than driving a nice car. It's more than this and having that. I'm going to tell you all that stuff is to come to you freely. If we stick with the agenda, we understand these gifts and things that God has given us, it, it, that'll be a no-brainer. And that's one thing I learned from um, Pastor Tony Brazier. He said, you see all this stuff I have? And he said, I ain't asked for this stuff. I ain't buy it. He said, people just gave it to me. But that man was a, he one of the biggest givers. I'm going to tell you, I learned to give by watching him, Dr. Dollar, Kenneth Ken Copeland. Those man give. They said Kenneth Copeland gives so much, it'll scare you. That's how much he gives. It'll scare you the way he gives. Dr. Dollar, stuff he did, the communities in place, they don't even show it on the 30-minute segment. You can't get it there. You have to go there. You have to see the stuff that they do. And, and Pastor Tony Brazen, the stuff that he does and things that he has given away over and over and over and over again. All the other stuff that you work for, it, it'll be added unto you. Yes. Just, just go for what God has called you to do. And, and I ain't going to say it no more. Thank you for tuning in to the Increase in National Ministries broadcast today. We pray that the Word of God has richly blessed and transformed your life. To know more about us, you may visit our website at increaseinternationalministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Increase, capital I-N-T, apostrophe L, Ministries. Or contact us by phone at 804-658-4896. Remember, wherever you go, may increase in favor flow.